All right, good morning. Um, for our children's moment today, uh, we, you will be ministered to by the children. Um, they are going to perform a number that they have kind of um, done most of the creation themselves. They picked the song. They picked their puppets. They helped in picking the props that we're using today. Um, so this is really their production. So uh, they're going to be performing a song that many of you are probably very familiar with. Our choir has sung it earlier this year. It's called My Lighthouse. So please welcome our raised hand ministry.
wish I could preach uh, with puppets. That would be more entertaining, right? <clears throat> Not quite that gifted. Been sort of busy this week uh, taking care of Annie who had surgery on Monday, a knee replacement. So I wasn't able to get a sermon title into the bulletin in time for, you know, when, they, when it was press time. So I'm going to give it to you now. You can write it down for posterity because I know you like to keep things like that. Um, it's got a title which is Do the Right Thing, right? Or Doing What is Right. I'm sorry. Doing What is Right. And it, there could be a subtitle which is um, Which Team Do You Play For? Now I know I'm going to have to explain that one, right? Which team do you play for? <clears throat> but let's begin with a prayer. Dear God, use my words today. <coughs> Excuse me. To inspire us to think deeply about what is right in our everyday interactions with other people. Give us the strength and the courage to do what is right. Amen. So now I'm going to add, I'm going to, this is an oldie, and I know some of you know the answer to this question. What do you get when you cross an elephant and a rhino? Some of you know that, but actually, you don't know that when you cross an elephant and a rhino? Okay, well, I'm not going to give you the, the normal answer, but here's the correct answer. When you cross an elephant and a rhino, by the way, the typical response is elephino. Okay, just so you know. Now you get, where have you been? Okay, but here's the right answer. When you cross an elephant with a rhino, you get a hearing with the ethics committee and a revoked veterinary license. <laughs> so after worship today, uh, as I said, you're all going to be in, invited to join us for a potluck meal and then a presentation uh, by uh, my friend Jerry Bruder. <clears throat> he's over there setting up right now, unless he's in here. Can't see him. He's upstairs, always over there. Okay. <clears throat> and what you'll see is in a very interactive and entertaining way, he will help us think about uh, ethics, about right and wrong. And so what I thought I'd do today is sort of prime the pump by giving you a brief introduction to the field of ethics in a playful way, kind of a fun way. <clears throat> and my inspiration for doing this is not just this presentation, but also the words of the Apostle Paul that he <clears throat> wrote to the... Uh, uh, Thessalonians that we just heard a moment ago where he says brothers and sisters do not be weary in doing what is right do not be weary in doing what is right and when I read that this week I immediately connected with the word weary because I'm pretty tired with all I've been doing this week but <clears throat> is this your experience that you sort of tire out in trying to do what is right Probably not. You probably not, not think about it that way. Most of us assume that doing what is right sort of comes naturally to us and we don't have to work very hard at it. However, it is more difficult than what we might <coughs> think. Now concerning the small stuff, we don't really sweat that too much, right? We might fudge a little bit here and there on what's right and wrong, on things that are not very significant, and, and, and we're not going to worry uh, too much about that. <coughs> What would be a small thing? You're like, uh, see somebody with uh, spinach and caught in their teeth. Are you going to say something to them? Um, how about you go to a, a, a store and you're in the parking lot and you see a spot pretty close by, but you're an able walker. So you think, well, let me leave that spot for somebody who might have more difficulty, um, you know, walking that distance. So you pick a spot further away. That would be a, a small uh, ethical decision. Uh, what about, have you ever been driven through like uh, Starbucks or McDonald's and you get to the window and they say uh, it's already been paid for by the person in front of you? So then you're, you, auto, you know, all of a sudden you have an ethical dilemma. Do I pay for the one behind me? Even though you're just getting a dollar T, do you want to pay for that $15 order of, of, of uh, Big Macs behind you, right? So it's a little bit of a, a dilemma. but. Uh, small, these kind of small things are not going to keep us up at night, nor will we grow weary of making decisions like that. But then there are the big things. Uh, these are things that could keep us up at night. Things that could make us grow weary, tired, uh, and trying to 
understand you know, what's right or wrong. I'm going to give you some examples. How about deciding when it's time to move a loved one out of a home that they love because it's no longer safe for them to be there? How about deciding when and if to pull the plug on a loved one? How about deciding when, uh, if you should adopt a child or give up your child for adoption? How about <clears throat> deciding whether to inform your employer that uh, one of the, your fellow employees has been dishonest and has cheated or done something wrong? And you know if you tell on them, so to speak, uh, they might lose their jobs. These are things that can tire us out, right? And we can grow, grow weary in trying to understand whether, uh, what choice to make. Now, in, in the Apostle Paul's case, when he was writing to the Thessalonians about this, he was addressing some community concerns, just the way they interacted and helped out one another. Uh, specifically, there were people in the community there that were not pulling their weight, so to speak. And if you recall, one of the uh, characteristics of the early church is that people lived in what we might call communes. So they shared everything together, right? They kind of worked in unison with one another. And the only way that system can work, of course, is if everyone contributes something according to their abilities. You know, unless you just can't. But everybody needs to do that if they can. So apparently the situation had got so severe there in Thessalonica that, that Paul felt compelled to say to them, Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. Now, by the way, this is something we hear a lot today when we talk about welfare and things like that. We shouldn't see that statement as a, an indictment of a welfare or a social safety net. But it is a reminder that one of our ongoing ethical responsibilities is to not be an unnecessary burden to others if we can help it. That we should try to do what we can. So, <clears throat> the reason why it is so uh, wearisome to, uh, to always do what is right, especially when it, when it comes to big things, is because there is a lot of competition out there. There is stiff competition um, out there against doing the right thing. So what I want us to do is sort of imagine that doing the right thing is the name of a team in a league called ethics. Okay, we have our league. You can, you can imagine any athletic endeavor you want. But you have this league called ethics. And the primary team, the team that we want to be on, is doing what is right. But there are some opponents in this league. And they include uh, such teams as not knowing what is right, doing what we want to do, doing what is popular, doing what is easy, and doing what seems necessary. I think these are five of the strongest competitors against the team doing what is right in a league we might call ethics. I'm going to say a word or two about briefly about each one of these. The first is not knowing what is right. This is the fiercest rival of doing what is right because, well, in order to do what is right, you first have to know what that is, right? So you first have to whip that opponent before you, you can go on in that and be successful in your ethics league. You have to know what's right. Uh, this uh, extremely dangerous uh, competitor was eloquently articulated by Ben Kingsley in a movie called uh, The Confession where Kingsley's character says, it's not hard to do the right thing. In fact, it's easy. What's hard is knowing what the right thing to do is. And once you know that and believe it, doing the right thing is easy. I don't really agree that once we know what the right thing is to do, then it becomes easy. But that's a good place to start, right? You have to know first what's the right thing to do. Now, even when we know what the right thing to do is, we still need to go up against one of the strongest players uh, in the league on that other side, which is not knowing um, what to do. And the strongest player on that team goes by the name of cognitive dissonance. 
cognitive dissonance. Very simply, CD refers to those times when there is a gap between knowing what the right thing is and actually doing it. So we know what the right thing is, but we, we're not willing for whatever reason to do that. And that's, there's a disconnect there, in other words. So we claim one thing, we do something else. Uh, that's cognitive dissonance. And we should not let cognitive dissonance defeat our team. Because once we know what the right thing is to do, we need to do it and, and send cognitive dissonance to the bench, right? Now there's some other uh, powerful opponents out there such as doing what we want to do rather than doing what is right. Doing what we want to do. When we were growing up, this was probably our biggest competitor. In fact, we may probably played on that team when we were growing up. And sometimes our team even went by the name of doing what comes naturally to us or doing the selfish thing because we're all sort of naturally self-centered, right? So that's a pretty powerful opponent. Even when we know um, what we should do, you know, we know we should eat right and exercise, be generous to other people, we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Thank you, Bible, for that one. That's a good one. But even though we know that, those things, we often fall back to doing what, really, what we want to do. What, you know, what seems sort of natural for us to do. And so we eat poorly, we sit on the couch all day, we, are, um, we hoard our resources, we ignore our neighbors rather than love them as, like, as ourselves. So doing what we want to do rather than what is right is a really powerful opponent in this league called ethics. Again, when we are young, usually there's another team that is fiercely competitive against us, against doing what is right. And that is the team doing what is popular. What is popular? This is a very difficult ethical team to beat because it has a very wide fa fan base. It's the most popular team in the whole league, right? And they're, so they're difficult to play against because everybody's rooting against you. And you don't want to be unpopular. You don't want to stand out like a sore thumb or go against the grain. You don't want to be made fun of or anything like that. So that, especially when you're young, but even as adults, you know, fending yourselves from the forces of doing what is popular. It's more subtle, but it's still there. It's still there. So if we find ourselves agreeing with everyone around us about everything, maybe we should ask ourselves, are we, are we uh, doing the right thing or are we doing the popular thing? And then there's the team name doing what is easy. <clears throat> This is the opponent that will come from behind almost, you know, every single time uh, and, and beat us if we're not careful doing what is easy. Because it's easier to do the easy thing than to do the right thing, right? So let's say, well, this may be, not a great, may be not a great example, but let's say a small child in your family comes to you and they ask, where do babies come from? Well, the easy way out is to tell a little white lie, right? And white lies are what we tell uh, when uh, we know what's right, but it's a little too difficult. We don't have the time, inclination, not worth the effort. Maybe we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or, uh, you know, make anybody mad or anything like that. Uh, or just maybe it's, we think, oh, we should wait until we say what we need to say. And so we tell the young child that, you know, babies obviously come from storks. And uh, maybe even to uh, women of a certain age who mysteriously and suddenly have strange food cravings. That's where babies come from. Uh, one of the, <clears throat> so the team doing what is easy, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a big opponent. One of the key players on our team doing what is right, I hope that's the team you want to be on, when going up against this doing what is easy team, one of, the, one of the key players on our side is tough love. Because tough love is not easy. There's, there's no players called tough love on the easy team, right? Because it's hard. That's a good player to have on your team. This is the player that you go to when the doing what is easy team is about to score and maybe win, and you need to stop them. You need a quick stop. So tough love. If, you ever, if you've ever had the experience uh, of having to practice 
tough love on a loved one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then a final worthy opponent uh, in the ethics league is doing what seems necessary. This is the sneakiest team of all because they often wear the same uniform as the doing what is right team. The doing what seems necessary team is the one that tells us such things as, well, the only way to defeat violence is through violence. Or the only way to solve crime is to incarcerate. You know, things that are necessary, we need to do these things. Now, fortunately, most of the time, that which is necessary is what is right. But we need to be aware, be uh, on the lookout for those times when the, the two are not really playing on the same team. Even if they're wearing the same uniform, they're not really the same team. There's some differences. Anyway, that's my introduction to ethics. The Apostle Paul was on to something when he warned his friends to not be weary in doing what is right. Because it is wearisome for those who want to give ethics, morality, all of that, the proper amount of thought and attention. Ethics is a tough league to play in because the opposition to the team doing what is right is fiercely competitive. So I'm going to just kind of rename them again just so you'll have some of this in your head. These are the teams that we're always struggling against. Not knowing what is right. Doing what we want to do. Doing what is popular doing what is easy and doing what seems necessary. Which team do you want to play for? Amen. <laughs>